I'm going to jump over to my browser and let's go ahead and open up a tab and do a search for Bitnami Drupal. Okay, I'm going to click on the top link here and this will take us to the Drupal page on Bitnami. And as you scroll down, you'll see several options. What we want is under the native tab here and we're looking for Mac right now. We're going to do the Windows one next. So I'm on an Intel Mac and so I'm going to choose Mac x86 and I'm going to click download next to Drupal 7.2. The application will download as a zip file so we'll need to unzip it in order to run it. I'm going to open it automatically with a utility that will unzip it as I download it. I'm going to click OK in order to complete the download and I'm going to fast forward here to the point where our download is complete. Okay. I've gotten it downloaded and it's unzipped and I have a .app application. I'm going to go ahead and double click it in order to open it. The installation process is going to be really simple. I'm just going to click next. I'm going to leave all of the defaults checked which will install Drupal, PHP My Admin, and the Bitnami control panel. I'll click next. It allows us to select an application folder. I'm going to rename this in order to add Bitnami to the name. So it's a little easier to search for in my applications folder and I'm going to click next. Here we're going to input the information that's going to create the first user on our Drupal site. So I'm just going to call it admin. I'm going to enter in a password. You'll need to enter in a different password than your login otherwise you'll see an error. And for my real name I'll just go ahead and type in my real name and I'll type in an email address and then I'll click next. Here by default the MySQL server port should be fine. I'm currently running a different version of MySQL so I'm going to switch this to a different port just so there's no conflict and I'm going to click next. Bitnami has a service that allows you to host a website, a Drupal website or any of the other Bitnami products on their hosting cloud. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this because I want to jump right into playing with Drupal and I'm going to click next and we need to click next one more time in order to begin the installation process. This will take a few minutes so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the point where we're done with the setup. So Bitnami has installed. We can go ahead and leave this checked here to launch the Bitnami Drupal stack and we'll click finish. Okay so this will open up a welcome page and we can jump right to our Drupal site by clicking the access Bitnami Drupal stack link right here. So here's our Drupal site and we can go ahead and log in using the information that we input into the form as we install Bitnami. And I'm in. So at this point there's just a couple tricky things when it comes to working with Bitnami. What I'm going to do is exit out of this tab and now we need to get back to the site. So how are we going to go about that? Well one way is that we could have bookmarked that page so that we didn't lose it. But if you end up losing it accidentally and you don't know how to get back to your Drupal site, here's what you do. Under your applications, go ahead and find the folder that you install Drupal into. So I named it Bitnami, so I'm going to go ahead and open up that folder. Now in this folder, there's an app called control.app. And we can use this in order to turn the services needed for our Drupal site on and off. Let's go ahead and open that up. So there's two services running behind the scenes as we run our Drupal site. So if our computer turns off, for example, we'll need to restart these services in order for our Drupal site to be accessible. So all we would need to do in that case is come into this control panel and click Start All. Right now we have a green light next to MySQL and Apache, which means that both of our services are running and we're good to go. So now we just need to know where to find our Drupal site. So I'm going to go back to our directory where our Bitnami Drupal stack has been installed and I'm going to open up the readme.txt file. Now this has some information about the stack and if you scroll down eventually after you see the installation process right here you'll come across a URL way down here under the fifth section starting and stopping Bitnami Drupal stack and it's this URL right here. So it's HTTP 127.0.0.1 and then the 8080 port and then Drupal is the folder inside of that. So we can go ahead and copy this and then paste it into our browser. 
and this will take us to our Drupal site. Once you've found it, it's a good idea to go ahead and bookmark it. The other thing that you'll need to know in order to work with this in a couple of the videos where we actually have to touch the file system is where the actual Drupal files are. So if you go back to the directory of our Bitnami stack, you'll see a whole slew of folders here. Well, we want to look inside the apps folder. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that. And under this is a Drupal folder. Let me go ahead and expand that. And you'll see a list of folders here. So this is not the base Drupal folder yet. We need to go under the htdocs folder. And if we expand that, this is our base directory for our Drupal site. And as you see the file directory referenced in future videos, you'll recognize this structure here. So again, when we installed Bitnami, we did so into a folder inside of our apps directory. And we called it bitnami-drupal-7.2. And so we just need to open up that folder, go into the apps folder, Drupal inside of that, and then the htdocs folder inside of that. And we're good to go.